Today's lesson answers the guiding question, how did the American Indians and Europeans interact with each other? Turn in your history notebooks to the next blank page and title today's homework notes, Interactions. When the explorers from Europe entered North America for the first time, they interacted with the Native Americans that had been living on this land for the past thousands of years. Can you imagine how surprised the Native Americans were to see the Europeans arrive in these massive ships and invade their land? The Spanish were the first explorers to come to the New World of North America, and they came as conquistadors, soldiers, claiming the land for Spain and conquering the Native Americans as if they were the enemy. When the Spanish conquistadors came, they fought with the Native Americans who lived in the areas that they explored. The Native American people were no match for the Spanish, as the Spanish had metal weapons and guns, a far cry from the bone, knives, and weapons of the villagers. Once the Native Americans were conquered, the Spanish made them their slaves. The Spanish were devoted to their religion, Catholicism, so when they arrived, they brought priests with them to set up missions all over North America. The Spanish planned to convert and educate the Native Americans because they believed it was their duty to spread their religion throughout the world. The Spanish conquistadors would often force the Native Americans to convert to Christianity, often killing those who did not make a change in faith. The Spanish believed that Christianity was the only religion people should have and they felt that the Native Americans were in desperate need of their help. Like we talked about in the Columbian Exchange, not all of the things brought over from the Old World were positive. Sadly, the Spanish brought germs that killed millions of Native Americans. Before the Europeans arrived, American Indians were remarkably free of serious diseases, but as the European explorers and colonists started coming over, this changed and the consequences were disastrous for Native American people. The death tolls from the newly introduced European diseases often reached 80 to 90 percent. Entire groups of people vanished before the tidal wave of disease. You see, the Native Americans did not have the antibodies built up in their bodies' immune systems to be able to fight the foreign diseases brought over by the Europeans. So instead of getting sick and fighting off the germs, they died. Many of you also may be aware that the Spanish sometimes used disease as a weapon in order to conquer certain Native American tribes. They'd send in malaria-infested blankets to the Native American villages, and the germs in the blankets would spread among the village to all the people. The disease itself would kill off entire tribes. Christopher Columbus was a Spanish conquistador. You may not have considered him as one, but he most certainly was. This painting shows him conquering the New World for Spain. You can see the Spanish flag in the painting, and he saw himself as a Spanish soldier, making conquests over the Native American people, killing their leaders, and making the Native peoples his slaves. Here are some other Spanish conquistador explorers that you might be familiar with. Pizarro, Balboa, Ponce de Leon, Cortez, and Coronado, whom we have talked about briefly in a previous lesson. The French had a different approach when they began interacting with the Native Americans in the New World. Instead of conquering and enslaving the Native peoples like the Spanish were doing, they viewed the Native Americans as a resource that could vitally help them increase their success in settlement. Many of the French explorers saw their exploration missions as opportunities to make connections with the Native Americans so that they could conduct business with them. The French were big on fur trading, and this provided them with a lot of money. And when they would bring back beaver pelts, fox furs, bear furs to Europe, they would make a huge income. So if the Indians could help them accomplish this better, they wanted to do so. The number one thing that the Native Americans wanted in exchange for their furs were guns. Native Americans did not have the sophisticated weaponry that the Europeans were inventing at the time, and a powerful weapon like a gun was a hot commodity among the Native Americans. 
The French were determined to set up trading posts throughout the French explored lands to make repeated trades with the local Indians on a regular basis. Eventually, French fur trading posts became towns and then cities like St. Louis, Detroit, and New Orleans. These trading posts were stationed by soldiers and were thus called forts. These were an integral part of the way the French interacted with the Native Americans in the early days. Check out the map. Notice the blue shaded regions. This is the French occupied lands, which as you can tell is a significant portion of North America, stretching up into Canada and as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. Let's zoom in on the stars that are spread out all over the map. Many of them line major river routes that were used as transportation roads inland that enabled the French to get to and from trading posts easily. Do you recognize any of these forts? Fort St. Louis on the Mississippi, Fort Detroit on the Great Lakes, and La Nouvelle Orleans, the French way of saying New Orleans. The French culture cultural presence in these major cities today is an influence that goes all the way back to the fur trading days when these towns were forts and trading posts. We recognize these cities in our countries today as important to industry, architecture like with the St. Louis Arch, and sports like the New Orleans Saints. And then there's the English settlers who first come in 1607. Their goal is to set up homes, farms, and towns with goals of permanent settlements that families can come to live like Jamestown. At first, the Native Americans were curious about the English settlers, wondering what they were doing here. Interactions are mixed between trading tools and weapons for food and other means of survival, but are sometimes hostile when Native Americans recognize that the English are there to stay. They are not leaving, but in fact, more are coming every day from Europe, and they are taking the land of the Native Americans. Farms are being built on their hunting grounds, and Native Americans are being forced to push their way further and further inland to get out of the way of the English settlements. Positive interactions between the English and the Native Americans included trading for metal tools that were new to the Native American people. In exchange, the Native Americans traded their knowledge of farming with the English people who were in many ways unprepared for the conditions here in North America. The Native Americans showed the English how to grow corn, beans, and squash, along with pumpkins for food to stay alive. Native Americans had methods of farming that were different from the ways that the Europeans grew crops. One unique strategy that the people of Plymouth in Massachusetts benefited from was planting a dead fish along with the seeds to provide nutrients in the soil that the plant could in turn use as a type of fertilizer and enable the plant to grow stronger and have more health. But there was conflict and a lot of that conflict had to do with land. You see, Native Americans believed that there was plenty of land and natural resources for everyone to share. Land was not owned by one person or group, but back in Europe, land was not viewed in that way at all. In Europe, people bought and owned land. Land was property that was not shared. When Europeans arrived, they claimed the land as their own and took it away from the Native Americans. They started building houses on the land, planting crops, making farms. The land was not theirs for the taking, but they took it anyway. This did not set right with the Native Americans, and this major difference in how they viewed the land created conflict between them. Europeans took advantage of their trust by drawing up treaties and contracts to take the land. Because their weapons were, not, were more powerful than the bone weapons of the Native Americans, it was easy to scare the Indians off and force them off their land. Other times, the Native Americans took action against the English. They saw the survival of the permanent settlements as a threat to their way of life. Europeans saw these Indian attacks as cruel savagery and blamed the Native Americans for their aggressive behavior. And yet, the Europeans often planned attacks of their own on the Native Americans, causing confusion and distrust between groups. 
Keep in mind that the Native Americans did not know the English, French, or Spanish language. So when the Europeans came in with treaties asking the local chiefs to sign away huge portions of their land territories, often the Native American chiefs did not understand what these treaties and contracts really meant. Today we have copies of those treaties, and it is very interesting to note how the chiefs signed their names. Having no written language of their own, with letters like we do in English, these Indians signed the treaties with symbols and pictures. Once the Indians had signed the treaties, the Europeans would advertise the land and get settlers to pay local governments for it. Native Americans were forced off their lands by soldiers who would clear the land of Indians. Many of them went to places like Oklahoma, far away from the lands that their ancestors had lived on for thousands of years. Many Native Americans died on the journey inland. The Native Americans never received money for their land, but the settlers built their homes and farms on the land that they thought they had rightfully purchased. One of these families you may be familiar with from a book series and TV series called Little House on the Prairie. Based on a true story, the Ingalls family purchased a plot of land from the government and settles it as their homestead, homestead in Kansas. If you have ever watched the pilot episode through to completion, you know that the Ingalls family encounters interactions with both friendly and hostile Indians while living there, and in the end, they are forced to leave their home because the government has determined their property to indeed be on Indian land after all. Conflict with the Native Americans was mostly fighting over ownership of land. As you can see from the cartoon on the right, conflict was because Europeans had claimed the land for themselves, but the Native Americans believed that the land had always been theirs. Native American tribes became pawns in the conflict between Europeans. Think about it. Guns made the fight very unfair for the Indians to ever get an upper hand. Treaties were written with English words and were often confusing to the Native Americans. When they signed and smoked the peace pipe with the European leaders, they had no idea that they were signing their land and way of life away for the white men to take. Sometimes medallions were given to the Native Americans who had signed these treaties as a symbol of value that the Native Americans might understand. What's a pawn, you might ask? It is the least powerful piece in a chess game. Indians were like pawns in the conflict of the early days. Lots of fighting continued, but often in these battles, more Native Americans' lives were lost than those of the European settlers. As I have mentioned before, language differences allowed the Europeans to cheat the Native Americans out of their land and resources. Sign language can only communicate so much between two people groups without exact words and explanations. The English were not the only ones who made treaties with the Native Americans and cheated them. The French did it too. Many of the French forts were talked about, that were talked about earlier were the settings of these treaty meetings where the Native Americans lost so much. We can see here some of the signatures of Indians who signed these treaties. Many of them drew Indian symbols as their mark to represent their names. Another thing that caused conflict between the Europeans and Native Americans was their differences in religion and culture. Native American culture was seen as uncivilized, and Europeans tried to convert Native Americans to Christianity. We see that when John White came over to Virginia for the first time as an artist to sketch pictures of what the New World looked like to take back to England, he showed the Native Americans as almost looking a lot like animals and displayed their foreign ceremonies that would have been shocking to the people back in Europe. As mentioned before, Europeans brought deadly diseases to America that killed millions of Native Americans. The Europeans had made it their mission to change the Native Americans into European type of people, behaving in more European ways and, of course, giving up their foreign Native American religions to join the Europeans' Christianity, which they believed was the only way to heaven. Not only were the Catholics set on spreading their religion and converting the Native Americans, but other Christian religious groups did too. There was co cooperation with the Natives, and this was in the area of trading. 
Europeans shared guns and metal tools because these were items that the Native Americans did not have and could not make from the natural resources around them. You can see metal scissors, knives, bracelets, bells, and other metal tools were of great value to the Native Americans and, like I said before, were a hot commodity when traded. Europeans knew this and used these items as buying power to get what they wanted and needed from Native Americans. So just to recap, the thing of value the Native Americans traded with was their farming techniques. Native Americans were expert farmers and they had been successfully growing their food for thousands of years. When the Europeans arrive and lack these skills, they are desperate to trade for the cooperation of the Native Americans so that they can learn the necessary farming skills that they need to survive. We know that the Native Americans had some unusual techniques, but once they were shared with the Europeans, they produced a bountiful harvest. And one of the main reasons why we have Thanksgiving today as Native Americans like Squanto taught the pilgrims in the early days what they needed to keep Plymouth Colony going through the harvest.